been a rough day, you just made it home, and you don't have a lot of energy, and you really need something that's gonna make you forget everything that you just went through the entire day. Welcome to Fresh Food Therapy. Today, we're gonna be talking about putting together some Band-Aid meals. Some meals that, that will really satisfy, stick to your ribs, give you a little bit of comfort, and make you feel like the world is a better place. So today, on Fresh Food Therapy, we're gonna be making ciambatta, which is a vegetarian, vegan even, uh, farmer's stew. And we're also going to be making one of my favorites from childhood, which is, it, well, it really doesn't have a name. It's just potatoes with peppers and onions and Italian sausage. And then, to go along with these hearty meals, we're gonna make a green salad that's real quick, just a tossed salad to go along with the meal. So, let's get started. So, we have some of the produce we're gonna be using for the ciambatta right in front of you. We have green beans, we have Italian zucchini squash, we have some bell peppers of different colors, we've got russet potatoes, and we have an onion. What we're gonna do is we're gonna prep them in front of you so that you can see what to do with them, and then we'll tell you where to go from there. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to prep the, the green beans. I'm just gonna show you a few so that I don't waste too much time. Now green beans are an outstanding source of fiber, but they also um, have a little bit of sweetness to them. And when they're added to a, a roasted dish, uh, they tend to surprise you every now and then with a little bit of, of flavor and a different texture. We're gonna be prepping the peppers just like before. We're going to cut the top off. And all you have to do is clean out the pith and the seeds, leaving everything else intact for the cooking. Literally, the, the, the thing that I found is that we lose about 25 to 30% of our produce because we don't know how to clean it properly. Um, I will do my best to be as fastidious uh, with, with my produce so that you can see exactly how much you get to actually eat when you're prepping it properly. Sometimes you don't have a lot of time and you kind of want to prep as quickly as possible and so we lose a little bit. Not a big deal, but hopefully I'll be teaching you how to prepare meals so fast that you'll have a little extra time to actually prep the vegetables properly. And then the zucchini squash trim. You can use larger ones for this recipe because we're gonna be roasting it in the oven. And because we're gonna be roasting it in the oven, it's not gonna really melt away like, like some dishes when you saute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the half moon. So just cut them in half. And then I'm gonna give them about, uh, about a third of an inch cut, maybe a little wider so that they become tender, but they're gonna stay in one big piece. And then lastly, the potatoes. The potatoes are a little different this time. In the past, we've, we've cut them um, kind of large because we were gonna either mash them or uh, turn them into something. In this case, because they're gonna be roasted, you want them nice big pieces that are gonna be able to be put in your mouth um, whole. So I'm gonna cut it in half on the edge. So it's like a wide flat cut. And then I'm gonna cut it into thirds, being very, very mindful of where the knife is and making sure that you're cutting slow because it'll slide just like that, do you see? Okay, and then we're gonna cut it into the bite-sized pieces. Like so. Now, once again, Remember how we were showing you the onion cuts before and I told you that one day you wouldn't be using the wedge? Today is the day that we're gonna do a different cut with the onion. So we're gonna cut the top like we always do, cut the bottom like we always do. Being very, very mindful and careful not to cut yourself. And now that you have it in cut into threes, we're gonna quarter it. When you're making a stew, it's very easy 
to have pieces that are bigger and rougher because they will melt into the dish, but you want them to, to be able to be seen and enjoyed. This is one of the better cuts for making a rough and ready stew. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back just a little bit because I didn't finish properly. We're gonna take the peppers and we're gonna cut it into bite-sized pieces to flash fry because you also want them to be a little bit bigger and a little bit more sturdy for, for the roasting process. Doesn't matter um, if they're a little uh, asymmetrical, um, just have them about the same size for the purpose of cooking. Now that we've cut, we're ready to assemble the dish. Now that you have all of the vegetables prepped, what we're gonna do is we're going to actually just quick saute uh, them together uh, in, a, in an order that will get them all tender about the same, same point before we roast them. So we're gonna take a little bit of our olive oil and put it in the pan. And then what we're gonna do is start with the most fibrous, which is the green beans. You can separate them into the, into the individual layers if you want. And now we're gonna add the peppers. Now it's gonna get tight in this pan. Let it cook for another two to three minutes. And then we're gonna add the zucchini squash to the dish. Now that it's been cooking for a little bit and it's starting to get tender, now we can add the final ingredient, which is the zucchini squash. So what we're gonna do is we're going to turn it, get it coated with oil. No real uh, shame in adding a little bit more oil to the dish if you think that it's not gonna coat well. So today what we're gonna be using is we're gonna be using a little bit of Lowry's garlic salt, just a thin coat. And we're gonna use Italian seasoning, which is a blend of about seven different herbs and spices. And we're gonna put a nice even coat over the top of the vegetables. Once the vegetables are coated with the garlic salt and the herbs, the dish immediately starts smelling wonderful. And you know that something good is about to happen. We're gonna let it roast in a pan, saute in a pan for another three or four minutes. And then we're gonna set them to the side. And then what we're gonna do is boil the potatoes, just parboil them so that they're tender. And then we'll dress them in the pan and then add the vegetables for the roasting. So we put the potatoes into the water and we're gonna bring them to a boil. Once they come to a boil, you're gonna let them boil for about four to five minutes. That will get them to the desired state of tenderness. They won't be overly cooked, so they won't be mushy, and they won't be crunchy to the taste. Once they boil, put the, the cover on the top and just time for five minutes. Okay, you have the potatoes that have been parbroiled and you have the vegetables that are still sizzling and are ready to be blended. So what we're gonna do is this is a really quick step. We're gonna take the pan and we're gonna pam it. Actually, no, don't bother panning the pan. You know why? You enjoy cleaning pans with stuck on food. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the potatoes and we're going to just put them in the pan to just lightly coat the entire pan. We're going to now add the diced tomatoes, Del Monte with basil and garlic and herbs. And we're gonna add a little bit of contadina. So we're gonna mix this all together. And once that's relatively well dressed, all we need to do literally now is take the vegetables and slowly and carefully add them to the dish. Once they're added, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix them so that they're coated 
and they're mixed evenly with the potatoes. Once they're coated evenly and they're well mixed, all we're gonna do now is sprinkle a little bit of extra Italian seasoning over the top. A little bit more garlic salt. And it's ready to put into the oven to roast. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, what we're gonna do next is prep the sausage, peppers, and potatoes, and onions for the other dish. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to cook the sausages in the oven at 350 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, if you do that, they should come out to be a nice, uh, cooked all the way through, brown on the outside. You might wanna turn it once during that period of time after like seven to eight minutes to get it brown on both sides. So we're gonna start by putting a little bit of Pam down on the pan because nobody likes having to spend hours cleaning pots and pans. And we're literally gonna just open up the package and put it right down on the, on the pan. Now, I'm hoping that you have a sense of humor as much as I do. So now we would put this right into the oven. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what happens when you're not thinking and you don't use pan. We put another batch in earlier and of course I didn't put the Pam on the pan and what you end up with is stuck on and broken sausages. We'll be able to use them but I'll be spending about a half an hour of time that I'd really rather do something else with later fixing my pan. And now we're left with the last ingredients for the for the dish. We're gonna prep the peppers like we normally do, cut off the top, split, Pull out the seeds and the pith. Don't need any extra seeds in the dish. And we're gonna cut them into pieces that are easy to saute and easy to put into your mouth. And there's no rhyme or reason to the way the pieces have to look. Just about the right size. You don't want them melting into obscurity in your dish, but you also don't want them so big that you have to use a fork and a knife to cut the pieces again. This time for this dish, instead of yellow and orange, we're using red and green to just give a little bit of vibrancy to the dish. And again, we're just gonna cut the peppers into the size pieces that we want for the dish doesn't have to be cut in a specific way. It can be however you like. If you are OCD and you want even pieces, I will not judge. And there you have the peppers prepped and ready to go. For the potatoes, once again, we're going to cut them into bite-sized pieces for roasting. Cut it longitudinally. Cut it maybe into thirds. Potatoes are prepped, and then the onion, just like the first dish, top and bottom, and then we're gonna put it into the third wedges that we were talking about. So we're gonna peel off the unnecessary layers that we're not gonna cook with. And there you have the dish prepped, and we're ready to start. So, We've got the sausages done, and we've got the peppers and the onions that we need to just flash saute. What that means is we're going to just put them in the pan, get it nice and hot, and we're going to get them so that they start to brown, they start to caramelize. We'll add a little bit of oil to the pan, we'll get it nice and hot, and then we'll saute the peppers and the onions to the point where they are starting to caramelize and, and blacken just a little bit. And then once they're blackened and they're ready to go, the next step will be cutting up the sausage 
and putting it into the fry pan. So we're going to coat the peppers and the onions with the oil so that they're even. And you can actually have it on a higher heat because you're going to pay it, uh, close attention and supervise this and there's really less of a chance of it getting away from you. Now while it's starting to get to the point of that beautiful sizzle, what we're going to do is we're going to prep the sausage so it's ready to go. So what you're going to do is about the same size as the pieces of pepper and onion, you're going to want the sausage. Generally for portioning purposes, one to one and a half sausages per person is a, is a good way to portion the dish. Now it will take a few minutes to get the peppers and the onions to the level that you want because you want them to be on the softer side before you add the, the sausage. The sausage is already fully cooked after being put into the oven at 350 for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now the peppers and the onions are right where we need them. They're just starting to brown a little bit around the edges. They're actually tender and, and beautiful. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add the cooked sausage to it uh, and let it cook together to build in flavor for a few moments to get the sausage nice and hot. And to prepare for the final step of the cooking process. Now, I think what you will find is that once you taste this dish, you're gonna crave it about once a month. And the nice thing is it really is a quick dish and you can make it the night before and then just rewarm it in the oven to serve it for dinner the next day. Now we have the sausage, the peppers, and the onions ready to go. And we're gonna take the rest of the parboiled potatoes and we're gonna add them to the dish after panning it. This baking dish is phenomenal. It's listed as good cook. So when we put the potatoes in, we're gonna coat the bottom of the pan evenly like we did last time. Now here is the thing. While the sausage and the peppers and the onions have a great deal of flavor, these are very, very plain potatoes. With the other dish, we put in a little bit of tomato paste and a little bit of uh, diced tomatoes with herbs. If we don't doctor these up at all, they're going to be relatively bland. So what we're gonna do is we're going to coat them with a little bit of garlic salt. We're going to pan them one more time. That will actually seal some of the flavoring onto the potatoes during the roasting process. We're just gonna add the sausage with the onions and the peppers. And we're not gonna mix these as much as we did the other one because we want the seasonings to stay on the potatoes. And now we're ready to put them into the oven. So now we have the two dishes ready to go. We have the beautiful ciambatta, which is the vegetarian farmer's stew. And we have the sausage, peppers, onions, and potatoes ready to be put into the oven. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna preheat the oven to 350 degrees, and we're gonna just put it in on a medium rack and we're gonna let them roast for about 20 to 30 minutes before we serve them for dinner. Now that they're in, they just have to bake for about 20 to 30 minutes and they'll be perfect and ready to serve for dinner. As we are preparing these meals, there are products and tools that we talk about because we want to give the sponsors a chance to show you what they can do to make your meals exciting and easier. Sometimes there are products out there that I really want to tell you about, but probably will never be a sponsor. But you know what? Shameless sponsorship uh, of 
the people that you care about and want to see do well is always gonna do well. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna make you a fresh green salad within a few minutes, and we're gonna dress it with quite possibly the most amazing olive oil and balsamic that I have ever come into contact with. Now, we try to remain on a budget and we try to keep things, uh, you know, thrifty, but there are some things that are worth it. And wait till you see what we do with uh, the Temecula Olive Oil Company's blood orange olive oil and pomegranate white balsamic today. You ready? So uh, the basis of any green salad is going to be your salad, your, your, your lettuce, um, your greens. Sometimes you use spinach, sometimes you use uh, romaine. In this one case, we're gonna use just an easy uh, iceberg lettuce head. You can find it in the store. They're usually about $1.50 to $1.99. Uh, They're relatively inexpensive. They're usually very crisp. All you really have to do is cut out the core and the whole rest of the head is able to be used. So what we're gonna do is we've cut it in half. We're gonna turn it, we're gonna cut it into fourths and then we're gonna shred it. And literally, you've got the fixings for about four people on a half a head of iceberg lettuce. Now to make things interesting, nobody likes just lettuce. We have some vine ripe tomatoes. All you have to do, cut it in half, cut out the, the little stem, I kind of like my tomato pieces to be big, even though they're, they're cumbersome. So what I generally do is I'll cut it in half, and then I'll cut it into thirds and put it right into the salad. You can wedge them, you can cut them however you like. It's all depending on your personal taste. Next, we have a cucumber. Cucumbers are very easy to prep, and there's a million ways to go with it. Some people like the skin on, it tends to be fibrous and waxy. You can take it off very easily. It depends. If you want it with skin on, you can cut it into rounds and you can put it right into the salad. If you like it with the, the skin off, you can just take a peeler and do a thin strip to take the skin off, leaving you with a beautiful, uh, clean cucumber. So I'm gonna cut it in half once I've skinned it. Cut it into fourths. And then literally all you have to do is to cut the seeds away, leaving you with a, a beautiful amount of cucumber body with none of the seeds uh, left to consume. With that, once it's done, I usually just cut it into bite-sized pieces which fit in the salad beautifully. And then we have next, the carrot. Again, it really depends on what you like. When I was a kid, I hated carrots. As I've grown older, I've developed an affinity for them. But here's what I found. I still don't like big, brown pieces of carrot in my salads. It's okay if they're cooked, but if you like your If you like your carrots nice and big, this works. For me, the way that I like it is I like to peel them right into the salad because the thin stripes give color, give a little bit of consistency that's different than the rest of the salad and has little tiny hints of sweetness whenever I run into them. And the other thing that's nice about doing it this way is you can use the whole carrot because when you get down to the point where you don't want to put any more in. You can dip the carrot into some peanut butter or some ranch. You can cut it into strips for you to snack on while you're prepping. It's important to feed the chef. The last part of the green salad is really just a little bit of onion. There are people that really don't like raw onions or have a problem digesting. I totally understand. You don't have to do this unless you like. But I'm gonna tell you that as far as color and flavor goes, a little bit of purple onion added to a salad really makes a salad sing for me.
And then what we're going to do is I think we're going to wedge. Cut into the center and then just cut a thin stripe all the way down. You only need a little bit because a little bit goes a long way. So we're using maybe a fourth of the entire onion. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a quick and down and dirty garden salad. Now, what I'm gonna tell you is, a little bit of dressing goes a long way. The flavors don't wanna be completely coating everything because you're not gonna be able to taste the vegetables. The olive oil and the balsamic from this company, so flavorful, so rich, that a little bit goes a long way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the blood orange olive oil, again from the Temecula Olive Oil Company. So good. And we're gonna just drizzle a little bit of olive oil over the top, no more than maybe two ounces. And then we're gonna take the fresh pomegranate, a white balsamic. And we're going to put about an ounce and a half to two ounces. And that's all we'll need for the entire salad. What you'll do now is you'll either take some spoons and toss it, or if you're a heathen like me, you can actually just use your hand. The hand is actually the best tool that you have for being able to coat and toss the salad. And ladies and gentlemen, we have your tossed green salad. Tossed with blood orange, olive oil, and a little bit of pomegranate balsamic. Okay, so we just pulled these out of the oven and we we're about ready to do that comfort meal that we were talking about. We have the salad fresh and the two dishes baked to perfection. What we're gonna do is we're gonna plate up a little bit of the ciambatta. And you're gonna get about six portions out of one of these baking dishes. We're going to do the sausage, peppers, and potatoes and onions. And again, you're gonna get about six portions out of one of these full baking dishes. And a little bit of fresh salad for your pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, the dishes today run about $2.75 a portion for the ciambatta and about $3.25 for the sausage, peppers, potatoes, and onions. Not a very expensive meal, but definitely one that's savory and satisfying and it reheats really well. So you can make a larger batch and you can have snacks for another day or another meal uh, depending. It was a pleasure cooking for you today and I hope you enjoyed your meal. And We'll see you again on Fresh Food Therapy.